everyone. Thank you for joining. This is our Google AMP webinar. We're really excited to have everyone come. Uh, before we get started, we do want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded. So we will send out an email to everyone who registered tomorrow with a link to view the replay. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's introduce ourselves. Let's. All right. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Cody. I'm the manager of education here at Duda. Uh, I do a lot of these webinars. I uh, do a lot of tutorials, support portal content, videos, that sort of thing. Uh, and with me, I'm really excited today. I have uh, two fantastic guests. I've got Amir Klott, our co-founder and CTO. Say hi, Amir. Hey, everyone. This is Amir. Excited to be here. So I'm uh, uh, one of the founders of Duda. Started six years ago, and I'm um, happy to discuss uh, Google AMP today. Fantastic. Thanks, Amir. And uh, we've also got Russell Jeffrey. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm a product manager here at Duda. Uh, I work alongside uh, a lot of different folks. And um, also, um, very excited to, to talk about AMP and how it's kind of evolving the mobile web and a lot of new, new exciting things. Excellent. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we're going to get into today. So first, I want to kind of... Um, just to set the expectation here, this isn't going to be like a, an in-depth technical tutorial of AMP or how to use the framework. We're really more going to talk a little bit about what AMP is, why Google's doing it, what the goal is behind it, and kind of the business case for AMP and, right. and where it fits in or should fit in to, to your offering and your product line. Uh, so we'll start off, we'll tell you, if you're not super familiar with us, we'll tell you a little bit more about Duda. Uh, then we'll get kind of more into the specifics of AMP, why Google's doing it, who it's important for, et cetera. <laughs> right. Then uh, at the end, uh, we will give you some resources to check out for some more information. Uh, and then if you uh, have any questions as we're going through, uh, feel free to type them into the questions box. Uh, and Russ, Amir, I will all do our best to answer as many questions as you have uh, with the time we have at the end of the webinar. So feel free to go ahead and type those in uh, as we go through. Yep. We will have some time. <laughs> yeah, we will have some time. The presentation is probably going to take about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. So yeah. We should have plenty of time for questions at the end. Shall we jump in? Let's do it. Great. Well, first, let's talk a little bit um, about us. So if you're not familiar with Duda, we're a responsive website builder, uh, do-it-yourself platform. Uh, our focus is mostly on web professionals and agencies. Uh, we've been around for a while. Uh, this is going to be our sixth year. We launched in 2010. Right. Back. You believe it's been six years? <laughs> <laughs> Barely. <laughs> uh, now we've got over six million sites uh, on, on, on our platform, which is fantastic. Uh, Russ and I are here in our headquarters in Palo Alto, California, uh, and Amir's over with our R&D team in Tel Aviv, Israel. Yeah. And we've got a lot of world-class partners, and you can see some of our logos down here. Yeah, definitely. Cool. All right, Russ, let's, uh, let's get into Google AMP. Let's do it. Um, so, um, first... Let, let's start off with, Cody, what is AMP? AMP, that's uh, Accelerated Mobile Pages. Is that it? That's it. Right? Webinar over. Is that, <laughs> that's the end, right? <laughs> Got it. No, we're kidding. We're, we'll, we'll get into a little more detail here. So so AMP, guys, is uh, it's a project that originally was started by Google. Uh, they announced it, uh, I think, back in late September of this year, maybe it was early October of, sorry, 2015, not this year. Um, and uh, essentially what it is, um, is a way to make mobile web pages load extremely fast. And, and the idea behind it is that Google is coming out and saying, hey, um, build web pages in this very specific and limited way, and we know and we can guarantee that these pages are going to go and, and load quickly on mobile devices specifically. I think it's important to note that this is mobile only, right, Cody? Yeah, it's it's, it's a separate, a secondary mobile page, right? right. It's not it's not like a responsive or a new way of making responsive pages. And so what Google's really done here is they've, I mean, defined kind of like some HTML standards and some custom JavaScript for people to use to make elements that load quickly. Right, right, and and the whole the whole premise behind this is that it's fairly basic and it's standard, right? And so you you have things like the basic text and images that make up most web pages today, and then for some of the more advanced things like carousels and image sliders and video, they have their own standard way uh, to ensure that it loads very quickly and consistently across all these different browsers, right? Yeah, and so you're using like AMP elements instead of like using the image element, you're using the AMP image. Right, um, exactly, exactly. So 
so I, I think uh, one question I think a lot of people would have is like, is that similar to other frameworks that we've seen, like response builders, like a Bootstrap or something like that? And what's the similarity there with this like new AMP mobile framework? Yeah, so so what you're talking about, Cody, is kind of CSS frameworks like Bootstrap. Uh, and foundation, and they're they're a little different than what AMP is, right? With Bootstrap and foundation, it's kind of a starting point for building your design out, right? Of you're going to lay out your page in general like this, and then you can build on top of that and extend it as much as possible. But with this, with AMP, Google is coming and saying, you know, no, uh, you have these set elements, and this is what's going to make up the page, and you cannot extend that any further. You cannot add any more content to it. So it's, it's a very limited set of features or things that you can add to the page. Whereas with Bootstrap uh, or other CSS frameworks, you can add more, extend it, write your own code, uh, really do anything that you could do in any modern browser. Okay, so AMP is really strict when it comes to like what you can and can't change on it. Yeah, definitely. Gotcha. Okay, and so it's it's this strict secondary mobile page that you're adding to your original responsive site. Right. right. Gotcha. Uh, and, and it is completely open source, right? So Google originally created the project themselves, uh, but it is 100% open source. And, and what that means is somebody from outside Google can go and look at the, the code that's there. They can contribute to it. Uh, they can make changes or recommend changes. And those can get added in uh, to the overall feature set of AMP. And so it's, it's not a closed environment uh, where Google's defining everything here. Um, we want to make sure we're not defining Google or like setting up Google to say like they're controlling this entire new standard. It is an open standard, and I think it's important to, to keep that in mind. Okay, well, let's take a look. I think uh, up next here we have what elements are actually included. So here's everything that's actually included. Here's the approved elements inside the AMP. We right. have a lot of the basics that you'd need, like images, audio, animation. Of course, knowing Google Ad and Pixel <laughs> right. for tracking, right? That's important. Uh, as well as a number of others, you can see that there's some custom integrations like Brightcove. Like, didn't they like work with the uh, work with the framework to add their own stuff? In? Yeah, Bright Brightcove's a good example of. The, they're a third-party company that does like video hosting and, and video serving, and they built into the AMP framework something to work with their service, right? So that's a, a good example of it being open source and adding in additional technologies. You could say the same thing though about Instagram, Twitter, Vine, and YouTube. All of those are also third-party extensions added in there as well. Mm. Right. So, but this is all of the elements that are allowed. Yeah, as of today, this is it. Yeah. Okay, so this is everything that you can... It can change in the future, though. Yeah, it can, and as more companies work with it, it can change. Yeah. So let's take a look. Um, let's see what this looks like. Right. So on the left here, we've got uh, a standard article. This is from the Washington Post, and, and again, there's two versions of this article, because AMP is that separate mobile page, or separate AMP-friendly page. Uh, and on the left, we can see, you know, they've got some social sharing. They've got like a, a, a like, a list, uh, a number of likes or comments going on up at the top. And on the right, all that stuff's really stripped out. It's really just focusing on the content. We've got our headline, you know, an image, and, and there's the body copy. Right. You know. A little more basic of a web page, right? You don't see the, the option to resize the text. You don't see the print. You probably don't even see the comments that are going to be there because with the AMP standard, you're really limited in what you can and can't do on these pages. And so uh, this one on the right side is really reflecting the limitations there of, of what's going to be listed. Yeah, and the, the, there's like a separate URL, right? Yeah, you know, you, you create a, a new page, right? And, and that would require its own URL on your same domain. So you have an AMP version of this page. And you also have the regular version still. Nothing changes with the regular version. But you just have this AMP-friendly version that's going to be there. Gotcha. Cool. All right, let's get into a little bit about uh, why Google is doing this. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a really, really good question. Um, I think the biggest thing is is because Google recognizes that today uh, the mobile web is pretty slow. Um, and uh, the mobile web doesn't have the same kind of engagement that you see uh, on mobile apps, right, Cody? Yeah, I mean, like, when you... <laughs> you try to load up a website. I, I know all of us, this has happened to me so many times. You, you're searching for something, you're on a social bookmarking site, you click an article, and then you have, like, you're waiting at this white screen to load on your phone. <laughs> and then when it does load up, you've got like a static ad at the bottom. You know, you've got uh, a banner in the middle. You've got a, a little opt-in pop-up that op pops over it. So, you know, that's a really frustrating experience. And sometimes if it takes too long, I'll just click back. And Google's goal here is really to 
prevent that from happening. They want publishers' content to appear, you know what they used to get through, and they want to be able to see the ads on the content, right? Right, right. So. Well, they also want to make sure that, you know, when you click on it, the content is loading very quickly, that you don't have that big delay of waiting for the page to render and download, and, and you have the, you know, the, the headline that gets displayed quickly, and you have that first image that gets displayed. They're trying to really make sure that that happens quickly. Mm -hmm. And I, I think also you, you see this from, from other um, you know, resources online as well. So Facebook and Apple have very similar initiatives to, to make uh, content load quickly on the mobile phone, right? So Google, Facebook has their instant articles, which uh, publishers themselves, they, they go in and publish the content directly to Facebook servers so Facebook can go and load up this content instantly inside of their, their mobile app. And this makes sense. A lot of people share news stories and, and links on Facebook, right? Yeah. And so that Facebook's really just trying to address the exact same issue. Yeah, exactly. You know, Facebook's doing it in a different way, uh, but they're they're both trying to solve the same problem here of, of the slow loading mobile websites. Yeah. Well, I would guess I don't know for sure, but Facebook probably doesn't want you to leave their ecosystem. Well, that's another <laughs> reason too. But <laughs> and maybe they can advertise to you as well. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see here. All right, so let's talk about uh, really who this um, who this. Uh, I skip forward here. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about why why Google is doing this in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. I I think an important point that I would start out with is Google search really relies on people's websites, right? You search Google, you're searching for other websites online. You're searching for content on the, those websites, and so Google themselves by recommending websites. Um, really relies on on web webmasters content or, or kind of things that are on other websites, right, Cody? Yeah, well, I, th I think like the way that I think about it is that third-party websites are like Google's product to their search end users, right? Yeah. Like, that's that's the service they're providing to all of us who go to Google.com and search for something. And if we're having a frustrating experience getting to those third-party websites and they're not loading or we find it an inconsistent experience, yeah, we're probably going to use Google less to get our information. Why not just go to Facebook where I can read? Article instantly, right? Um, so that's I think that's a consideration. I know that ultimately the search users are Google's end product to their advertisers, but you know we're thinking about Google wanting to provide the best experience they can for their audience. And their right. Users. Absolutely, and, and it, it kind of just goes along with you know if you click on a link from a Google search result and it loads quickly, it's a better experience uh, for for the end user themselves and gets them to their end goal quicker. And that's, that's ultimately what Google's looking to do, so you continue to use them over and over and over. Yeah. And so by defining this AMP standard, it's really Google's way of kind of influencing everyone, right? And influencing third-party websites to, like, help them, help Google provide a better experience. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Nice. All right. Amir, did you have something you wanted to, uh, to add to that? Um... Yeah, I think like in general, like you know, we'll also talk about it later on. I think in general, it's a good thing that Google is driving, like you know, all the internet, all the mobile web to be faster. So I think in general, it's uh, uh, it starts really with like publishers and content, but uh, we like it in do that that the, the mobile internet is becoming faster and faster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We we you know, I, I think you know going forward, it is very important that mobile websites continue to load quickly uh, across the web and. and Ultimately, it's the good thing that Google is really pushing people to do that. Yeah, I think Google's been tackling this problem in a few different ways. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's take a little look at how uh, AMP is, or who AMP is, is focused on. <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, I, I think we've been leading up to it. I think publishers are really the ones that are, are kind of the target of this. Yeah. Right. So publishers like blog, blogs online, or news organizations like the Washington Post example we used earlier, or the New York Times, or... Uh, Politico or, or these type of online uh, publishing platforms that, that really push out uh, more news focused. And I think um, if I were Google, I would have looked at this as, you know, this is kind of the low hanging fruit of where we can start with this tool, right? Um, these online uh, web publishers, they're, they're number one, uh, they're having a hard time monetizing, right? And, and because they're having a hard time monetizing this web traffic, um, they've started to really load up their web pages with a lot of um, advertisements, uh, tracking pixels, uh, code to track you around the web. Um, and so Google looked at this and said, you know, these guys um, are providing almost the, the opposite experience of what they want. And, and so 
they're starting with the publishers. And, and there's, there's also the benefit of that these publishing websites, all they really are is text and images, right? The feature sets on there are a little less, uh, you know, a uh, little less uh, necessary, right? You don't need huge features or embeds or, or complicated websites for these publishers, right? Yeah, I think it's kind of like a living fruit. <laughs> you got these like websites that don't need to be slow at all, and they are super slow and yeah. frustrating. Let's just let's just help them out. Let's help them fix it. Yeah, and also exactly. those sites, also those sites get like you know so much of the traffic. So by you know doing a project with like a Washington Post, for example, uh, automatically it affects uh, a big part of the web. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It's a good way to get market share and adoption of AMP as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, I think those publishers also, a lot of them advertising, <laughs> some of them with uh, the Google Display Network. Right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Cool. Uh, so I think a big question then is, you know, is AMP an important standard uh, for your small business website clients? Right. You know, your customers, your clients, is, is AMP critical or important for them? And uh, our opinion, I think, is that really small business websites aren't really the goal or target of the problem that AMP is trying to solve. Right. Right? It's mostly for those publishers that are just loading their pages up with all this extra stuff that are causing this sort of experience. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're watching, you know, I'm not saying Washington Post has pages like that since they're adhering to the standard now, but you know, I've, I've had super frustrating experiences and I know uh, probably everyone attending the webinar has as well. I haven't had that same experience when I've gone to like, you know, an electrician's website or a plumber's website or, or a lawyer or a dentist's website. I'm not getting the same experience. Uh, and so I, I think it's really geared towards that other group of uh, publishers. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, if you look at the feature set, and, and we listed this off a little earlier in the webinar, um, it's, it's really limited uh, inside of AMP. And adding those features in is can be a little difficult. Um, while you absolutely get a fast-loading website, you don't have features like e-commerce or contact forms or click-to-call buttons or, or map embeds uh, directly on, on the web page itself. There's a lot harder to accomplish um, those type of features that really uh, are necessary for SMB or business websites today. Yeah. Amir, what do you think? Yeah, I think like, you know, absolutely. I think that um, the AMP project is, is still like fairly new and as we said, uh, Google is really starting with the publishers and you can see like the features uh, or the tags that AMP, AMP is supporting today, it's really like focused on publishers and advertisements. So you have Pixel there, and you have iframes there probably because of all the, you know, many of the ad networks are working with iframes and so on. But, but basic features like, like a form is not supported. And uh, I think today it really shows that it's still not ready for SMB websites. I mean, an SMB website without uh, a contact form. So why, why like to have the website at all, you know, or without a click to call for, uh, or a buttons and stuff like that. So. So I think that like uh, we can see that it is really focused on publishers at this point, and probably it's going to evolve in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So I know one question that a lot of small businesses are going to have, since this is a standard coming from Google, you know, is this an important SEO indicator? Is this a you know a new requirement from Google? Yeah. You know? and, and I think the important point here is that it's not, right? Mm-hmm. Ab absolutely, Cody. I think. Uh, this is actually kind of one of those myths that, you know, due to seeing this question asked of our customers towards us is, you know, will this affect, you know, SEO? And the short answer is no. Um, that, you know, if Google uses page speed as an SEO indicator, meaning that if your page loads faster, that's a good thing. But they're not saying that AMP-based pages are going to get an SEO boost. Right, mm -hmm. and and this I think this is an important point to make that you can you can absolutely have a fast loading website um, and not have AMP behind it, right? Yeah. Uh, and and kind of continue on and, and still provide a wonderful experience with all this feature richness um, that's out there, um, but you just don't need AMP uh, to to accomplish that. Yeah, and I, I think that's super important. So I just want to really clarify that and drive that home that. <laughs> So the, the whole goal of AMP is to make your sites faster, right, and uh, load quicker. And while loading quicker is an indicator, AMP in itself is not. Exactly. And as long as exactly. your pages are loading quickly with or without AMP, that's really what's going to affect your SEO. Yeah. And, you know, just, just to kind of cover this again, um, 
the most important things for SEO are the content that's on the page, right? Not how quickly it loads, but the actual information that you're giving to the visitors. Um, or the links that are pointing to your website. You know, links are just a way of saying this person has good content. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this person has something. Proving something a reputation, there. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also making sure that your page is mobile friendly, obviously, is a big SEO benefit. And then um, there's a lot of secondary and kind of minor SEO indicators. Um, these are just a few of them. They're like 200 total or something. Uh, you know, page speed is one that we mentioned. Having an HTTPS website, setting up your meta descriptions. Those are more minor indicators for helping Google crawl and index your website. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So let's talk about how Duna sees this, right? <laughs> yeah, Mir, do you want to jump in here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so how do we see it at, uh, at, uh, at Duda? So first, um, like, you know, um, as we said in the beginning, we think it's a good thing that Google is pushing the mobile web uh, to be faster. Uh, on the other hand, we see that it's really meant for publishers and not so much uh, for small business websites and it would really limit the features uh, that are essential for small businesses and it doesn't affect uh, uh, SEO. But what we think about it is that um, we are going to like monitor it very closely. Uh, some of you might know the Duda One platform today is using uh, something that uh, we call dynamic serving, which basically means that uh, from, our, from the Duda servers we are generating a little different set of HTML, CSS and JavaScript according to the device that you're using. So if you're using mobile, our servers are uh, spitting like different HTML and different CSS than if you're using a desktop. And from technology point of view, um, it would be fairly simple for Duda to add uh, like another mode, which is kind of uh, an AMP, uh, AMP view or AMP render, which is taking the website that you're all building on Duda and create an AMP version of that. Um, I think this is opposed to some of the sites that are serving just static HTML and cannot really control that. So once we once we feel that we can provide uh, a sufficient uh, website on AMP that like can answer, I would say, the basic functionality that an SV site uh, would need, uh, we'll definitely go ahead and uh, implement that. In yeah. the meantime, in the meantime, what we focus is on uh, things like speed. So we monitor page speed very, very closely at Duda. Uh, we think it's really, really important. Uh, we wrote a blog post about it a few months ago comparing ourselves to some other website builders and what we do to improve. We did a lot of improvement. We still have way to go. For example, to get rid of any JavaScript and CSS above the fold and stuff like that which are more complicated and we'll continue to do that. So websites that are built on Duda will be very fast to load and get high page speed score on mobile and on desktop. Um, and we foc we'll focus on things like, you know, providing SSL for runtime sites uh, and other, um, you know, important SEO indicators. So that's how we see it today. Yeah, I think, Amir, I think, I think you hit on a, a pretty good point is that uh, one thing that, that we can, you know, take away from AMP, even if we're not implementing it, is what they do to make websites load quickly, right? Of, of these best practices that they are recommending and pushing out there, just because we don't implement AMP doesn't mean that we can't look at it, observe it, learn from what Google's doing and pushing out there, and, and do some of those those kind of things that, that you mentioned of making sure that you know the content is the first thing to load on the page, um, or that you move kind of more complicated resources towards the bottom of the page. You know that that type of optimization is something I think we can learn um, and grow from as well, even if we don't implement the AMP standard itself. Yeah, absolutely. Like one of the nice features of AMP, for example, is that like you re you replace the image, uh, the standard image tag, with the AMP image, and what it does is really make sure that like you know to serve the right size of image uh, to the uh, to the to the mobile browser. And this is, for example, something that we do automatically using our dynamic serving functionality. But uh, mm -hmm. as you said, Russ, we we still have a way to go there, and. Um, we feel that like loading mobile websites fast is super critical. Absolutely. Great. Cool. All right, that sounds good. All right, let's uh, let's talk. So if you guys are curious and uh, want some more information about AMP, you can find out more uh, direct from ampproject.org. That's the the project website. So you can check it out. Uh, also, we have a great blog write up 
uh, that uh, Russ here wrote. So <laughs> if you'd like to see his penmanship and skills, check out uh, bit.ly slash duda-amp. Um, and then if you're curious uh, and if you're, you're not too familiar with Duda, you can check us out. We actually have a fantastic website restart program. Uh, check it out, dudamol.com slash dudapro. Uh, we work directly with agencies and web professionals. And uh, So, yeah, uh, there's some stuff. And if you guys want these links, I'll include the deck in the follow-up email. So yep. if you guys have these links uh, and the replay to check out tomorrow. So thank you all so much for coming and joining and listening to us talk. Uh, so if you guys do have questions, we're going to go ahead and bring up the question box now, and we'll, we'll go through and, and uh, do our best to, uh, to answer them for you. So. Yeah, guys, th thanks for coming out, and I'm happy to get into some, some questions now. Give us a second to, <laughs> since we get caught up. Here. Yeah. Let's take a look here, trying to find some questions. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Glad you joined. Um, Does AMP work with Duda sites and our non-responsive mobile sites? Uh, I think that's something that we kind of addressed. It's, it's that, you know, on, on Duda, we're not really, we're not adding AMP pages in yeah. currently, but, you know, we are going to keep an eye on standard going forward, and, you know, if, if that changes in the future, it's actually, you know, pretty, pretty simple for us to add it. Right, right. Uh, Robert, I see you're asking, so forums would be unacceptable for AMP, and, and the answer is yeah. Uh, you can't have contact forms inside of AMP pages as of today. Yeah. Um, Craig is asking, will AMP compliance sites get, SC, get priority SEO results? And so uh, this is one that we answered throughout the webinar, and I, I think it's a good question. Of You know, Google has come out and said no. Uh, that, that AMP pages will not get uh, SEO priority over non-AMP pages. Um, I think also what might be good to mention here is that when you know Google, um, towards the end of February, is going to turn on AMP in their search results. And so you'll see news stories coming out about this AMP standard. And what that means is all Google is going to do is from their search results page, they will link directly to the AMP enabled version of that web page, right? So the things like the content and what's on the page are still going to be the most important by far, but Google is just making sure that when you're on the mobile search results, they'll go directly to the AMP page so it loads quickly. Um, there are already websites out there, and you know, Washington Post was one example that we used, that have implemented AMP, and so the standard is out there already. People can use it today. The only change is that Google is doing it from their search results. Isn't that, isn't that similar to the change they made with mobile websites, where if you had a mobile-friendly version of your page from the mobile search results, Google would point directly to the mobile version? It's going to be like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Amir, uh, th this might be a question for you. Um, uh, Robin is asking, I'm surprised AMP supports iframes. I've been told for years um, that iframes are not going to be usable. Uh, what gives with this? Yeah, it's a good question. So, like, we don't know for sure, but our best guess here, uh, you know, like many of the many of the um, um, uh, ad uh, like advertisement uh, uh, embed codes are actually using iframes. Uh, many of them. It's even things like you know Facebook like buttons or uh, you know other other types of uh, um, you know ad networks integration are using iframes. And as we said, Google is really uh, I mean, Google is doing a good thing, but in the end, it's doing something uh, uh, for its interest, which means we want mobile web pages to load fast, so they can still, like, you know, show the ads uh, on the Google Ad Network in a fast way, so we can, you know, people will click on them and we'll get the revenue. Um, and iFrame is still very basic in the ad network industry, so this is probably like the reason that Google is putting it as part of the standard. This is the same reason that they put a pixel there as one of the supported elements. Yeah, yeah. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. well, Zom, you're saying, I uh, question the page example that you showed can also be achieved using just CSS media queries. Uh, I think that's a really good point to bring up, is that, yeah, you can achieve a lot of the same results of Google AMP without actually using mm -hmm. Google AMP. You know, whatever you can do to make the page load quickly, and Google just kind of set up these standards for publishers to use just to have a standard here for them, you know. Yeah. But if your page is loading quickly on its own and you're able to achieve that optimized page load time without Google AMP, then that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Linda has a great question here. Um, 
So does AMP widen the chasm that exists between desktop and mobile development? How do you think it will impact responsive efforts? Um, and I think the first thing to say here is, is that it is still extremely important to have a responsive website. Right? AMP is not replacing all mobile versions or uh, replacing any type of mobile version of your pages. It's a secondary page that's going to exist. And so you're still going to need um, a desktop or a website in general that works across all these different device types. And so you know, um, what Google is doing is just making sure that you have a specific version of this page or adding a specific version that loads quickly in these use cases. right? By default, when people go to your site, they'll still get that normal responsive website, right? If they were to just type in, you know, uh, Russ's web website.com, they would still get the mobile version of the standard site. They wouldn't go directly to the AMP version. So I think kind of a follow-up to that question from Craig is, is, do you think responsive design will move towards using AMP as the default mobile version? I, I you know, I think if I were to answer this, and Amir might have a, a different opinion, I think it, it's, uh, it's no. Um, I, I would say uh, you still need definitely a responsive version and a mobile-friendly version, and that should be your starting point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, I totally agree with you. I doubt that it will re replace something like responsive. We also like need to understand that, like you know, from Google perspective, responsive uh, websites are still very important in the sense that Google would like to see one URL and the same content across all the internet, uh, no matter if it's desktop, tablet, uh, or mobile. So the last thing that Google wants is that like the AMP version will display a different content uh, compared to the uh, responsive version or the desktop version. So this is kind of like another step on top uh, for people that can really support that like that can really show the same content with slightly different rendering uh, technology. Uh, I think this is a key here. Yeah, definitely. So Tina's asking, can you install shopping cart coding into AMP? And <laughs> yeah, again, the answer is no. Uh, it, it is really limited to those 15 or so um, elements that we put up on, on the slide. And that's that's all that's been approved in for, for the framework so far. Yeah. Uh, Dave with, with a question. Uh, for a while, Google was saying that responsive was the way. Does that mean they're changing their mind? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say they're, they're necessarily changing their mind. I think for the majority of websites out there, um, I think responsive is still the way to go. It, it is kind of the best practice to start with a responsive website. Uh, or having sites that are mobile friendly in general is obviously the most important aspect um, that's there. And so I would say this is just a different way of, of making things load quickly. Um, but I, I think I think to a broader point, I think uh, Google is a little confusing with what they're doing with this AMP project because they're, they're talking a lot about it. They're, they're putting a lot of press behind it, um, and it is a little conflicting with their responsive message. And so I think uh, Google needs to clarify this a little more and, and make sure that they're talking to the right audience uh, with this AMP standard, because um, I think it is a little confusing. Yeah, I agree, Russ. I think it's like, you know, one thing, like, you know, from Google perspective, so responsive is great, but I think what they see, and especially some of the publishers that, Russ, that you mentioned before are doing, so they have a responsive website, but still the responsive website is still loading all the CSS and all the JavaScript and all the pixels and tracking code and everything that they have on the desktop. And they just change, like with media queries, they just change the, the layout and the display. But the fact that the site is responsive, it still loads slowly because it has all those extra features on top. So this is what Google is trying to address here. I think that like if you're making sure that your site that you're building is loading fast and it doesn't have like you know all those um, many many extra features, then you are in a good point to start with. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. uh, see, Robin, you're you're asking, uh, you're saying that you found Duda because you got a notice from Google that they weren't going to index sites that weren't mobile friendly, so you came over to Duda uh, rather than using. Uh, older code and, and just to redesign your site, uh, how does AMP factor into that and uh, does the standard mobile friendly responsive website or is it an addition? I think this is uh, something we've kind of been answering here in these questions that yeah, it is in addition to the responsive site. Yeah. Um, but if you are a small business, it's probably not critical uh, for you to use AMP. Yeah, yeah, definitely not today. 
Um, I think I, I don't think there's a real reason to use AMP for, for small business websites. Today. Yeah, and I see a few more questions that people do have some confusion between the difference between AMP and responsive, and I think we've, we've done in the last few questions we've gone yeah. over that. So if we skip yours, uh, I do apologize. Uh, and Alex does kind of clarify here that's from from what he's hearing, it's a third type of page in addition to your normal site. It's not responsive. It, yeah. is, it is separate. And yeah, Alex has that correct there. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. So Ron is asking, in a tech or in a strict technical sense, is the AMP served from the website's server or from the Google server after they have crawled and indexed the page? Uh, so Ron, um, so good question. Uh, the the content will be served from your website. Um, this is one of the differences between Google's AMP um, and Facebook's Instant Articles is that. Uh, when you create an AMP version of your page, it gets served from your web servers uh, that are out there. And so the content is yours and you own that entire thing. Uh, for the Facebook version, uh, you actually publish the content to Facebook and they manage the content inside of their own you know, technical CMS database stuff. Um, so yeah, it's a, good, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a couple of people with disbelief over no contact forms. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> yeah. Um, Alisa, you're asking, what does SMB stand for? Again, uh, that, our apologies of us using our industry lingo here. That's small yeah. medium businesses. Uh, so small, smaller businesses and small business websites is, is what we mean by that. Yeah. And also, what is meant by no e-commerce? Uh, <laughs> exactly that. No e-commerce. There, there is no way to sell on your website. Yeah. Yep. There's no AMP to, uh, standard for shopping carts or e-commerce buttons, etc. Yeah. yeah, imagine that the form element on HTML is not supported, so it's difficult to implement a shopping cart without a form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, Robin's asking, with Flash is gone, it's almost impossible to assign a website that truly stands out. Most of the websites in the internet these days look so very similar. We seem to be in the cookie cutter days of the net. This new AMP they're taking away, even more design tools from other designers. Is there a way to make these AMP sites stand out or look unique at all? Uh, Robin, I, I think I think that's a pretty good criticism um, of of AMP um, is that it is so limited. Is that you know most of these pages are going to be uh, have a logo at the top and then a white background with black text and it's all going to be pretty straightforward. There, there's not a lot of differentiation there uh, between the designs and layouts of these pages. Yeah, that's that's very true. <clears throat> uh, Chris is asking. I, I missed the opening remarks, but is this required? I have a map and contact form on my site. Um, yeah, I, I think just to, to answer it, of, of you know. Essentially, AMP is not going to have those those contact forms or maps on the website itself, and uh, you know you're not going to be able to take advantage of if you're using this AMP standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, okay, and Yaron's kind of asking, okay, so what's the logic behind this? Um, uh, I think we tried to get into this a little bit during the presentation, but I mean, if I were to try to break it down very very uh, simply in an elevator pitch sort of thing, I think that. You know, Google's serving up a lot of search results to publish your websites that are loaded down with like marketing tracking tools, stuff that tracks your behavior, what websites you go to, that are, are pulling that information, and they're trying to load ads and custom ads for you. There's opt-in forms, there's photo galleries that they want you to slide through so ads get more impressions. There's right. a lot of tip, like little tricks that the marketers and publishers and advertisers are using that are really just creating a poor user experience uh, on these content-rich sites, and Google's saying like, "Hey, you know, we want these pages to load quickly. You know, uh, we think it's in your best interest. It's in our best interest. It's in the internet's best interest for you to do that. Here's a set of standards that you can use to ensure that your pages are going to load quickly and will continue to uh, to, to rank well on our, our site because they're loading quickly." I think that's pretty good synopsis there, Cody. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Michelle is saying, I think without click to call, the mobile site does not reach its first pur purpose to reach the business fast. I, yeah, yeah, I think it's totally right. I think uh, most business websites, uh, mobile visitors are looking to take action, uh, and so you need to provide something that allows them to do that quickly. <laughs> totally. Uh, Dan is asking, um, video format, pixel specifications, and frame rate. 
Um, this looks like it's kind of towards the features of AMP. And essentially, uh, what, what the AMP does is, is allow you to use images, or sorry, videos and pixels in a very specific way inside of, within the, the AMP standard. And so uh, essentially it's saying, you know, use our video format, our video code, and we'll make sure that it loads quickly and, and loads within the, in the parameters of, of the website itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is an interesting one from Linda. She's asking if Google has commented at all about the impact of AMP to, uh, or AMP to small, small and medium businesses. You know, this this is an interesting one, and, and from my my watching of this, they haven't they they haven't directly come out and said uh, this is what it means for these type of websites. Um, if you read if you read the ampproject.org website, uh, one of their their FAQs is who is this for, and they do say it is primarily for web publishers. Uh, they do recognize that online, but I I don't think they're being very uh, specific about this. They're, they're not being very direct about this and this is what I was commenting on earlier about is you know it's just kind of confusing about what message Google is sending out about this and, and how this is going to be used. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Savannah is asking does AMP secondary pages remove the advertising that standard pages have completely or do I misunderstand how it limits the visible features on a page? Uh, that's a great question and so um, with AMP you're, you're going to be using only the approved AMP ad element or the AMP pixel. Yes. Right? You know? And so, and so the, the, the way this works is that you have to, you, essentially every ad network is going to have to plug in to the AMP ad standard. And uh, a lot of these, these ad networks have done this already. Uh, but you'll have to just format your ad code in a very specific way to make sure that it works on these pages. I think this is a good question for Amir here. Uh, uh, Kevin is asking, is Duda going to address this as it evolves, given that SMBs won't really be impacted now? Will Duda be watching to see if they need to add anything to the Duda platform? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think uh, we, we talked about it a little bit before. We are definitely watching it closely. And uh, once we feel that the AMP uh, framework uh, is capable of like the basic things that we feel are critical, like a contact form or a click to call button, uh, we'll definitely add that to the roadmap and implement that. So I think from technology point of view, we are ready to do that. Just that, like we don't believe that the result would be something uh, that you guys can really you know sell to your clients. Um, and absolutely, and if there is any change there or uh, Suddenly we see that uh, Google is changing the SEO based on that, which they said that they would not, or anything like that. We'll watch that for you, and we'll let you know, and we'll do like uh, the, the stuff that we need from, from on the platform side to, to make sure that you guys are, uh, and the websites that you're building are, are uh, um, getting good SEO, loading fast, and so on. So Elisa is asking, will do to offer HTTPS at some point? Uh, Google is asking publishers to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, I'm happy to say that like we are actively working on a solution. Uh, I don't have like the exact date, but we are making progress, and we'll definitely uh, add support for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jay is asking, as AMP implementation increases, will sites built using Duda Mobile? have the same or superior performance versus sites built using Duda 1, or will both Duda platforms perform the same uh, under AMP? So, yeah, guys, so as, yeah, sure. So, yeah, so as we said, like, today Duda is not, uh, has not implemented AMP yet. So right now, um, both Duda 1 and Duda Mobile are not, um, um, you know, there's their performance is as you see today. It's not related to to uh, to the M framework. Um, between do the mobile and do the one, um, I think they load like similarly. Of course, uh, it's different products, but uh, uh, both uh, both of them are rendering like uh, uh, pretty fast and get pretty good um, uh, page speed scores. Yeah, definitely. So Jennifer is asking. Um, so does Google simply serve the AMP version of the page after sniffing to determine if the user is on a mobile device? Um, Jennifer, the, the way this works is that 
Um, inside of your standard web page, you embed a, a small snippet of code uh, that says, hey, I've got an AMP version of this web page. Um, and that way, when Google comes and crawls your website, they know that there is an AMP version of this page that they can send visitors to. Uh, and then from their search results, right, and this will only be for mobile search results, they will know that you have an AM, AMP version of that page, and they will send the visitor directly to that AMP version of that web page. Um, and so it's only going to work on, on uh, mobile devices, and, and Google will send people directly to that version of the page from their search results. Great. Yeah. Uh, Tina had a question uh, just about Duda Mobile. She says, why doesn't Duda's mobile websites work well with iPad-sized devices? It seems to only be focused on cell phone-sized devices. And that's uh, our mobile-only site builder. Uh, that's just for mobile mobile phones. Uh, if you want something that works well on tablets, we have the Duda One responsive website builder that works well on tablets as well as mobile phones and desktop. Uh, and so that's our, our newer platform that, that works on all devices. Great. Uh, DA is asking, um, we need to add a schema markup to each page. Please take a close look at uh, this developer Google link. Um, schema markup uh, is shown to improve rankings. Um, I, think, I think this is a good point um, about, about schema markup, and this is something that, that Duda is you know, evaluating and looking at of, of trying to add schema markup to web pages. Uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult challenge of knowing exactly what the content of the web page is about and then finding the um, appropriate schema markup to go with that. Uh, but we, we completely agree that it's important, and I think in the future you will see Duda uh, start to do a lot of these schema markup uh, items uh, by default. Uh, Robin is saying, Duda really saved my butt when I had to quickly <laughs> convert my older websites to mobile-friendly standard. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, Carol is asking, can you put the Duda blog link in the comments for everyone? Yeah, I think we can we can send that out for you guys. But we'll also include this um, in in the deck and in the follow up email. Yeah. So you guys will have access to all the resources. Definitely. Uh, let's see, Jason's asking, does Duda do asynchronous loading of CSS and JavaScript? And two, is load time on a mobile device most affected by device processing or the bandwidth of the device? Is the bandwidth, what are the thoughts on how fast mobile bandwidth will increase over the years? I'm guessing, if, I'm wondering if AMP will be obsolete and a waste of time in a few years. Um, wow. That's a pretty detailed question. <laughs> it's like three questions in there. Um, for, for the first part of the question, do we load uh, JavaScript and CSS asynchronously? Um, the answer is today uh, we, we do not. Um, I think what, what we're looking at is placing it towards the bottom of the page more um, so it does not block the rendering. Uh, this is what you'll see Duda working on in, in the future. Um, we, and, and then the second question is about kind of mobile processing in general. And um, I, I think the, the biggest limitation right now um, is is actually the mobile bandwidth that's out there today. And, and downloading the actual website is what takes the longest uh, amount of time. And so, um, you know, you will see bandwidth increase, but, you know, I, I don't think it'll ever completely eliminate the need for, for kind of the AMP and, and really reducing, reducing the size of the website. You know, I don't see the mobile web getting to a place in the next few years where uh, every web page loads in, in two seconds without using a lot of these practices that, that AMP recommends. So I think it's probably a combination of both, Jason, of, you know, developers are going to have to get better at um, optimizing their websites, and, and also uh, thing speed will increase on, on the mobile bandwidth side, and also phones get more powerful, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And Ross, I just want to add, uh, I just want to add one thing to your answer regarding what Duda is doing today. So, uh, uh, it is correct that, like you know, when you load the page, we don't use asynchronous uh, CSS and JavaScript, but we definitely use it when you navigate within the page. So if you notice, like you know, uh, once the home page or uh, or the internal page is loading, when you click on other links on the site, whether it's on the navigation or uh, internal links and so on, um, we basically keep all the JavaScript and CSS of the framework of the site, and the only thing that we do is like we just call the content of the new page and the 
specific CSS part of the new page using Ajax, um, and that gives a much faster response when you navigate between one page to another. That's a good point, Amir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Carlos has a really good question here that some people, I, I know I've been asked before too, and Amir, I think it'd be great if you could address this. Uh, saying that Google Speed Test is recommending some technical fixes to sites developed under the Duda platform. You know, what can we expect as far as specific actions taken by Duda in this regard uh, going forward? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think, like, you know, one thing that we, uh, um, we, always looking to improve is like um, different images and size of the images so to make sure that like images are optimized another I think like the biggest the biggest point today that uh, um, uh, the biggest factor that doesn't give us like you know like uh, like a 95 score or something like that is uh, render blocking JavaScript and CSS uh, that Russ and I talked about it um, basically, um, you know, things like jQuery that is used on the mobile websites and some CSS. And this is a challenging project, but we are going to work on that uh, until we get it removed from above the fold. So once we do that, uh, we'll see like a big improvement on the, uh, uh, on the page speed scores. And just to remind everyone, uh, um, I think like when we compare it, like do that to other website builders, the websites will do the score higher. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, guys, I'm seeing a lot of comments here about, like, thank you, thanks, <laughs> all the best, thanks for keeping it short and sweet, great webinar. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. We really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to talk with us today. Uh, we apologize if we didn't quite have enough time to get to everybody's question. <laughs> good half an hour of questions, though. Yeah, good, good half an hour of questions. So thank you all again. And, again, please check out the, uh, the deck and the resources, the replay. I will be following up with everyone. Uh, with an email tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Everyone have a good afternoon. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.